Welcome back to The Wheel on the School, Chapter 9. Chapter 9, The Wheel Rim. When the soaked Elka and the dripping Yella arrived in Shora, they hurried down the street to bring their load of wheel spokes and rim sections to the school. I don't know if anybody in Shora has a rake, do you? Elka asked doubtfully. With no trees and hardly any yards, there's nothing to rake in Shora. The teacher might have one, Yella said. He's got a little garden. The word stopped in his mouth and he nudged Elka. There stood Pierre and Dirk in the open gateway of Giannis' backyard, talking to Giannis. Look at that, Yella said in an unbelieving whisper. Something's up. Elka said, and hurried right into Giannis's yard. Now he, too, stood in the gateway, talking and talking, explaining everything to Peer, Dirk, and Giannis. Yella stayed in the street, but Elka mentioned him to Giannis. Yella, come on, he yelled. Yana wants to see, th uh, see those rim sections. Yella did not move. Giannis wheeled himself to the gate. Come on, kid, I don't bite. No, Yella said doubtfully, but you hit awfully hard. Oh, that's right. You're the big kid I spanked good last year, Yana said. Out of the side of his mouth, he said to the three boys around him, Maybe I did it a bit too, uh, maybe I did it a bit hard if he remembered it a whole year. With everybody looking at him, waiting for him, Yella had to come. He came but over his loaded arm, he kept warily looking at Giannis and was ready to turn and run like a hare if he had to. Yella suspected such, some trap. It wasn't right. Giannis sitting there talking to kids. Something must be going to break loose in a minute. Giannis just wants to see if those pieces of rim can be fitted and glued together again, Elka explained reassuringly. Yella stepped up dumped the whole load of rim sections before Giannis's chair and hastily ste stepped back out of reach. Giannis had made no attempt at all to grab him. Instead, he rummaged among the rim sections that Yella had put before him. He sorted and fitted, trying to fit the different pieces together the way they had been originally. The other boys stood absorbed. Is Giannis going to fix it for us? Yella whispered. He couldn't believe it. <clears throat> Giannis heard him. It can be done, he told Yella, but it'll take time. Some glue, a few strings, and some small small nails. Storks aren't too fussy. But it won't stay without an iron rim to hold it together, will it? Yella asked. He forgot his fear now that it seemed there was a possibility the wheel could be put together again. He crowded in close between Dirk and Pierre to see just what Giannis was doing with the pieces. Giannis dropped the sections he was holding so suddenly, Yella jumped back. But Giannis just said, Right you are, kid. You've got something besides beef above your neck. This is wasting time. Come on, let's go get that rim. <clears throat> we'll need a long rake to drag the canal. The mud is so deep, Elka told him. A rake, Giannis considered. Now who in Shora would have a rake? They use that on land, don't they? It was a joke, but nobody but Pierce seemed to feel e enough at ease with Giannis to laugh. Pierce snickered out loud, but when he saw he was laughing alone, he sobered and said, The teacher's got one, Giannis. I know. I had to help him with his garden once, for punishment, instead of staying after school. On to that teacher, Giannis commanded. Come on, let's go. He grabbed the wheels of the side of his chair to propel himself. On to the school, he bellowed. He seemed to be in seemed to be full of good spirits. I'll push you, Giannis, Peer offered. I will too, Dirk said. Elka hastily piled his spokes beside Yella's scattered rim sections and jumped to help with Giannis's wheelchair. May I, Giannis? Giannis, may I push you? Let's see. Giannis studied the four as if it were a deep problem. Then he pointed to Yella. You, big fella, you push. Maybe if you do something for me, you won't be so scared of me. With Yella, with Yella behind the chair, they started off down the street to the school. But the other three boys couldn't keep their hands off. The strange wheelchair was too fascinating. 
They started off sedately enough, but with all four pushing. Yella and Pierre from behind, Dirk and Elk at the sides. They were soon going at a half run. The wheelchair went bouncing and jouncing over the irregular street. Giannis had to hang on with all his strength, but he seemed to like it. And since he didn't object, the boys went still faster now. They were almost at a full run. Yippee! Giannis yelled out ahead to the empty street. Out of the way, all you mortals. Giannis is coming. <clears throat> the boys shoved still harder. Boys, this is it. This is making the old wheelchair go. It never knew it could go so fast. Giannis was quiet a moment. Hey, Pierre, he yelled over his shoulder. This is almost as much excitement as when that shark bit off my legs. Yelling and laughing, with the weird wheelchair rattling, they arrived at the school. The teacher came running from the classroom at the strange sounds outside. By the time he reached the door, the boys had already shoved Giannis and the wheelchair into the school portal. The teacher and Giannis met each other full tilt. It was almost a collision. Is something wrong? The startled teacher asked. What's happened? What's happened, teacher, is that these boys found a wheel, but then promptly went and lost the rim in the canal. But they say you own a rake, so we've come to borrow it to drag the canal. It fell apart, Elka explained. Then they were all explaining together. The confused teacher finally held up his hand. What I get out of this is that you need a rake, so I'll get my rake from home. Then we'll all go to the canal and you can sp explain it all on the way. He skirted the group and rushed out of the door. I think I like that man, Giannis observed. Never had much to do with high-minded teachers since I was a kid, but he means business. I thought teachers just talked, but he doesn't fool around with words. He goes and does things. The boys wheeled Giannis' chair around to push him out of the portal again. At that moment, Giannis saw the bell rope hanging in the portal. Hey, a rope, he said. I should have thought of it. We need a rope. That bottom mud in the old canal goes so deep in places, we may have to tie a rope to the end of the rake. He grabbed at it. Hey, don't, Pierre warned. That will ring the bell and then everybody will come because if the bell rings, that means a wheel has been found. Well, a wheel has been found, hasn't it? Giannis said impatiently. At least nine-tenths of a wheel. But don't worry, if I yank that rope with a good enough snap, something will give without ringing the bell. He reached up and gave the rope a tremendous snapping jerk. The rope parted somewhere above in the cupola and came tumbling down around Giannis's head. There, he said, now we've got a rope. He proceeded calmly to coil it around his arm. Giannis just did things. He hadn't even asked the teacher's permission. The boys looked at him in awe and stared up at the empty hole in the portal ceiling through which the bell rope had always hung. No wonder you could hardly walk for a week, Elka whispered to Yella and tenderly rubbed the seat of his own pants as if feeling the pain. The teacher appeared in the portal doorway. He had the rake, but right away he missed the bell rope. He stared at the empty, but right away he missed the bell rope. He stared at the empty rope hole in the ceiling. Figured we might need a rope too, Giannis explained. Oh, I see, the teacher said faintly. Oh, yes. Well, are we ready? Giannis asked. Then let's get going. Outside, he took the rake from the teacher and laid it across his lap. Seeing I'm riding, he explained with a grin. Say, he added, maybe you'd better tie this rope around my chest and the back of the chair so I won't go flying out on my face, the way these crazy kids take me down the street. The teacher, following his instructions, wound the rope tightly around Giannis' chest and bound him to the back of the chair. Can you run? Giannis asked the teacher, because we really move. <clears throat> the four boys giggled. A teacher was a dignified, important person, and Giannis had asked him to run. To their amazement, the teacher grinned. Well, he said, I should be able to keep up with a wheelchair, and if I can't, you and I had better change places. Giannis liked that. He bellowed a big laugh. You're all right, he told the teacher approvingly, but the wheelchair was moving too sedately for him. He looked around. Well, you kids, 
What's the matter? Just because the teacher's here, you'd think I was a delicate baby in a pram. Get going. Get the lead out of your pants. With a doubtful look at their teacher, the boys shoved a little harder. When the teacher still made no objection, they increased the speed. Now they actually had the teacher running beside the wheelchair at a half run. He still looked good natured about it. Here we go, Yellow warned the others out of the side of his mouth. Look out, you mortals in Shora, he yelled out in imitation of Giannis. Giannis leaned eagerly uh, forward against his rope. Ready. The boys shoved him ahead with all their might. Now they tore down the Shora Street at full speed. They went at such a pace that Dirk and Pierre at the sides had all they could do to steady the bouncing, jumping wheelchair. But Giannis was shouting things at some woman they passed. Just out of Shora, Elka had to fall out. The pace was too much for him. But he couldn't stand being left either. He came trotting on behind. All out of breath, except Giannis, they arrived at the spot in the canal where the rim had gone down. Giannis was all for starting to fish for the rim at once, but the teacher protested. Remember, we ran all the way. Now, we've got to do a little breathing, he said. Wait till we catch our breaths. Mine's still back there in Shora. Breathe all you like, Giannis said generously. I'll study the situation meanwhile. He propelled himself in the wheelchair so close to the canal's edge that the alarmed teacher, who had sunk down in the grass, jumped up again to hold the chair back. Yella hurriedly grabbed one of the wheels. Dirk and Peer took the other. Now Elka came puffing up. He too took hold of the wheelchair. Unconcerned with all the stir and worry, Giannis began, began dragging with the rake. With everybody hanging onto the chair, he leaned against the rope and reached out as far as he could. After his tenth cast with the rake, he began to look doubtful. That mud must be bottomless, bottomless here. I don't know, teacher, but it looks to me like you'd better send a telegram to China. Have you guys seen a wagon wheel rim down there? None of the boys laughed. They stared somberly into the canal. Elka came up from behind the chair and peered along the canal. Hey, there's the hub out there, tied against the bank. He pointed out the hub to Giannis. You'll need, to ra you'll need the rake to get that out, too, Giannis said as he threw the rake out again. At the very next cast, the rake struck something hard. Giannis worked furiously, probing the spot, trying to get the rake to take hold of whatever it had hit. Got it, he said at last. But what the br rake brought to the surface was an old enameled pail full of mud. In his disgust, Giannis hauled it up by the end of the rake and flung it far. At least that's out of our way. He turned to Elka. Here, kid, he said. Go get that hub first. We've got to try something different. Let me do it, Elka, the teacher said, taking the rake. I've been feeling so useless here. He hurried down the canal. The boys pulled the chair back from the canal's edge. Giannis prepared the rope. We'll try it with the rope tied to the rake as soon as he gets back. We're going to have to go really deep. And if that rope is long enough, I'm going to get that rim out. Ought to find it with the rake on the end of a rope. Going to find it. Man, I haven't had so much fun since that shark bit off my legs. He looked blandly at Dirk and Pier. Yella's mouth fell open. Elka stared at Giannis. Both legs in just one bite? He asked in awe. Giannis shrugged. Am I supposed to know how many bites? He asked. I wasn't looking around just then. What did you do? Yella said. I kicked his teeth out. That's what I did. Pierre was enjoying the solemn awe of Yella and Elka. He couldn't resist. But he'd bitten off both of your legs, you said. He pointed out to Giannis. Did I say both at one time? Giannis said and glared fiercely at Pierre. He was still sawing away on one tough old sea boot, so I kicked him in the teeth with the other. That's where I made my mistake. It made him so mad, he just bit off the other. Then I couldn't kick him again, having no more legs left. I hope those sea boots gave that shark a stomach ache, worse than green cherries. 
Pierce said, looking solemnly around at all the others. Me too, Yella said fervently. Elka stood dithering, mouthing a question he badly wanted to ask Giannis about the shark. But Giannis saw the teacher coming back with the hub. At once, he had to be pushed back to the canal and became too busy for questions. He tied the rope to the rake handle, threw the rake far out into the canal and let it sink. Slowly, he dragged in the rope. Suddenly, the rake caught. Now then, Giannis said, hang on to the chair. That's the rim, and now it's coming up here to me or my name isn't Giannis. His enormous arms swelled and quivered with the strain. He began to draw the rope and rake and whatever load hung on it toward the canal bank. It was such a tug that the cords in his straining neck swelled on his arms, swelled and his arms bulged. Suddenly something snapped. They had all been straining so hard to hold the wheelchair back, they jerked Giannis and the chair far back from the bank before they could regain their balance. The rake handle, still tied to the rope in Giannis's hand, floated on the surface of the water. Well, there went Shora's only rake, Giannis said gloomily. No one else said a word. All stared in dismay, all stared in dismay at the rake handle in the canal. Well, now we're just going to have to figure out something else, Giannis said. He sounded almost too cheerful about it. Let's get back to Shora. I'll rig up something, some way. No one said a word. In the heavy silence, Giannis jerked his head up. Did you hear that? He held his hand up for silence. It came again, the sound that only Giannis had heard. The wind brought it along the canal. It sounded like screaming, like women screaming. It sounded as if the wind was bringing it from the dike at the far side of the village. Again, the wind picked up the sound. It whisked by their ears along the quiet canal. Giannis grabbed the wheels of his chair and whirled the chair around. Those are women. Something's wrong. His eyes shot to the weather vane on top of the tower and then to the sun in a quick estimate of time and wind direction. Ah, he said, the tide's in. Most likely some sheep, sheep strayed down the dike and got themselves flooded in the tide and now, and now are sta standing there just like sheep letting themselves drown. Let's go. We'll get the rim later. <clears throat> they jumped to push Giannis to the road, but as they did so, Giannis once more held up his hand for silence. Listen, he said. For a moment, there was no sound. Then there came a faint clanging and jingling, but it came from the opposite direction of the screams. Oh, it's only the tin man's wagon, Yella said at last. They shoved Giannis into the road. Hold it, he said. Wait for the wagon. It will get us to the women a lot quicker than we can get there on foot. Down the canal road, the horse and wagon came around a bend and over the bridge in a full gallop. The pots and pans danced and jangled, clattered and banged. Hey, look, Pierce said. Isn't that Orca on the seat? He's standing up. He looks as if he's yelling at us. Orca had been sitting between the tin man and his wife on the high seat of the old wagon. The children had settled down in the deep wagon box among the pots and pans. The tin man had insisted on taking them for a long ride around shore. The direct route down the dike road from Nest to Shore had been too short for him. Everybody deserved an outing this Saturday, he had insisted. They ended up on the canal road on the opposite side of Shore. As they rounded the bend in the road and came over the canal bridge, Aka caught sight of the little group at the canal. Look, Aka yelled out, something's wrong. Somebody must have drowned. Even Giannis is there in his wheelchair. He jumped up on the seat. Can this horse run? He asked anxiously. He can run that far, the tin man said. He slapped the lines hard across the horse's bony back. The old horse lunged back ahead. With an insane jangling of Tim, the wagon lurched and rattled toward the waiting group at the roadside. All right, see you in chapter 10.